September 20th, 1954, Meher Baba met his 20 Western male guests outside Khushru quarters and set off in two cars towards Ashram of Upasli Maharaj in Sakori. On the way, they stopped at Rahuri, where Baba showed them where his mad ashram had been. The villagers gathered around them as the cows grazed in the fields. shared jokes with Baba and Darwin Shah snapped a beautiful photo of Baba with the villagers. The men arrived in Sakori ahead of Baba, and Baba's blue Chevrolet car was surrounded as it arrived. Baba was taken to the ashram in a procession of drums and brass band, where he was finally met by Godavari Mai and the Kanyas.
Baba showed the men around the ashram as the crowd gathered outside. Baba then met with Godavari Mai and the Kanyas who placed Baba on a swing reminiscent of Lord Krishna. They sang a devotional song to Baba. Then Baba and the men bid Godavari Mai and the ashram farewell and departed Sakori. The following day, back at Mehrabad, Baba told the men the story of his history with Upasni Maharaj and Sakori. When I was in that superconscious state, whose consciousness was of God. In that state, I was drawn to Shirdi to be near Sai Baba. The first day I was drawn there, I had bloodshot eyes and had had no sleep for months. And I laid my head on his feet as he was walking in the procession. He cried out loudly, Parvardi Gar, meaning, You are God. After saying that, he pointed to the direction where Upazni Maharaj sat. I went to where Upasni Maharaj sat. He was thin and weak. As soon as he saw me, he picked up a stone, threw it, and hit me on the forehead, and instantaneously, I recovered normal consciousness. Then I went with him to Sakori and stayed off and on for seven years. Sakori was not then as you see it. It was still wasteland with a small hut for Upasni Maharaj. There was a woman there, a lady called Durgabai, who loved Maharaj and myself equally. People gathered there, 
mostly Brahmins, for Maharaj was Brahmin by birth. People began to come pouring in for his darshan. A structure was erected, and a Brahmin atmosphere prevailed. Maharaj and I used to sit together every day, and the Brahmins became jealous. Why is this Zoroastrian so favored by Maharaj, they asked. Maharaj gradually gave hints of my divinity. Few could swallow this. Many resented it, but our daily sittings continued. They built a Hindu temple there and performed the usual ceremonies. And then one day Maharaj declared to all my early mandali that Merwan is now perfect. From that day, I did not go to Sikori. And from that time the Hindu atmosphere increased. Maharaj encouraged them to be jealous of me, and to be bitter, and to hurt me. But Maharaj told Durgabai and Yashwant Rao that Merwan is now Malik, owner of the universe. When the Brahmins heard me called Malik, they wanted to kill me. Maharaj and I were both unaffected by all this. I will now tell you something private. Maharaj was given poison, a deadly dose. He felt numb and was not able to walk for a few days. But he withstood it, and it lost its effect. Then Gadavri Mai came, and Maharaj says, I do not want this Brahmin atmosphere of men. And he began to gather girls of pure character who wanted to love God only. Later on, Maharaj sent word by Adi's mother, Gomai. Soon I will drop this body, so tell Merwan to come to see me. I said I would not set foot in Sikori. So a meeting was arranged elsewhere in a hut. We embraced each other, and I put my head on his feet. He said, You are Adi Shakti, the primeval power. He started weeping, and said to me, Keep your eye on Sikori. Then we both went away, and three to four months later, Maharaj dropped his body, and Gadavri was given charge of the nuns. Gadavri was in on the secret all the time, but never said a word about me. But the atmosphere there was Hindu with their ceremonies. I have come to destroy in the world all rites and ceremonies that are superficial. Gadavri loved me in secret. The men there made it appear that I was not the spiritual heir of Maharaj, only of Babajan, and spread the news that Gadavri was in charge of the ashram and Maharaj's spiritual heir. Poor girl, she is so good, a wonderful soul among women. She was in a fix, but her good nature kept her going. Then my disciples increased and the Sakori Brahmins became more and more angry, like the disciples of John the Baptist. Then a miracle happened. Did you not see Mr. Wag? He used to spit in contempt when anyone spoke of me. You see how he has changed? All this was due to Gadavri. Her loving influence overcame the Brahmin atmosphere. She at last saw me at Amanagar and asked me to come once to Sikori. As I had promised Maharaj I would keep an eye on Sikori, I took the occasion of Yashwant Rao's housewarming to go. Wag's group did not like it, because if Gadavri should bow down to Baba, what would the situation be? Gadavri welcomed me, placed her head on my feet, garlanded me and placed me on the swing where Maharaj used to sit. 
I called Wag and embraced him, and he was relieved of the burden of opposition to me. I embraced all the group, and they all melted. Gadavri showed her love so clearly that the entire atmosphere cleared. As you saw at the Darshan on the 12th of September, Gadavri and the men were there. Now they all love me and recognize me as the Avatar. <laughs>